welcome back to the bathroom sessions Lindsay here and today I am joined by Helen Naval from HN Designs hi Helen good morning hi today we are chatting about tips and tricks for creating a wet room or wet room style bathroom in your house so shall we start by just explaining what goes into a, a traditional wet room in terms of a fully waterproof space and how you would go about creating that when you say a true wet room, what that used to be is that you have a um, shower drain in the floor and that the whole of the bathroom or the area is tiled and then the, it's a slight gradient in the floor to go back to that drain to encourage the water to, to go back to that. And of course with that, like you mentioned, the idea is to make the whole of the space waterproof so that you do the what they call the tanking um, of the walls and the floor. Um, you can do tanking or you can use completely 100% waterproof boarding that are then sealed in the joints to, to kind of create this complete seal of the room and then you tile on top of the floor and the walls on top of that and grout as per normal. With that, normally a true wet room would mean that you don't have any enclosures of any source at all, so you don't have a shower screen or anything. That would be what you would refer to as a true wet room. Is it expensive to do that? my recommendation would always be to make sure that the area that you shower in is completely waterproof and that is then regardless if you have a normal shower tray or if you have a, a wet room um, floor if you compare those two costs you still have the cost element relating to the walls but then the difference would be in the actual sort of how you treat the floor itself assuming that you do the wall tanking in both scenarios the labor intensity is slightly higher if you have a completely flush um, tray so i.e underneath the floor that you don't see it with the gradient fall um, to do that is a bit, bit more labor intensive to create so the cost is going to be slightly higher than if you just purchase a normal tray and, and install it as per as per standard do you want to talk a bit about the floor level and how important it is to get that right? So the floor level really is going to be critical to what your experience is going to be like with your wet room. So the key is obviously that you have a fall to the drain itself and that can be created by either a preformed tray that goes underneath the floor. Um, and then you tile on top of that and therefore you need to sort of cut the tiles to suit that particular slope and take that through. So that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way would be, like you said, to have a preformed tray which is made from a different type of material. So it could be from a resin or it could be um, steel enameled and they are designed to sit flush with the other tiling that meets up to the particular shower tray. So you have the same end result with it being completely flush but you don't have the tile cut into the tray and therefore you have a completely smooth surface with a, a pre-designed fall to go into the waste itself. You don't have to go down the true wet room route to create a wet room look these days. You can get large shower enclosures, large shower trays. Can you explain just how from a design perspective you can create that look in your bathroom? Yeah, I think in most people, that's kind of what they're after. They're after the, the benefit of the flush floor, but actually they don't want to have the inconvenience of having water throughout the rest of the bathroom. So you are absolutely right. A lot of people go something that's a little bit more enclosed. So what you need to look at is obviously the size of the room that you've got and what you can create with that, because of course you need to make sure that you have a good access area into um, your actual showering zone so that can be um, with a screen um, if you have a smaller space and you're worried about how much water may come out of this immediate sort of shower zone a good idea could be sometimes to have a screen but then at the end of it you have a panel that's hinged so that you enlarge the protected area when you're in the shower itself but when you then have finished your your shower you then fold that back and therefore you gain the open space back again. I would say design something that gives you an opportunity to introduce a protection of some sort. So um, if you can't, if you have a very, very small space, um, there are some clever products out there, which is in effect a bifold um, screen. So you can create a, a little enclosure, whether that's 90 by 90 or something like that. But then when it's not in use, you then fold them right back against their you know, the walls, and therefore you gain that whole space back again. And um, that's a really good way of getting what you want out of the accessibility point of view, potentially, 
um, but preventing water from getting everywhere when, when in use. You need to look at the position of your shower waste. Um, that is obviously dependent a lot from a technical aspect where the waste needs to run and the fall and the length of it and so forth. But you need to look at it with regard to the shower equipment that you actually have as well. So if someone has an overhead shower, a flexible shower, body jets, obviously the water is going to behave completely differently than if you just have one single shower component. In addition to that, people have different shower habits. So some people really like the idea of being completely sort of drenched with water and stood immediately underneath the water falls. Others want to step out of the shower when they do their shampoo, so sort of get themselves ready and then step back into the water again. So therefore you need to look at the waste in relationship to where they might be stood. Because if someone is showering and they're stood immediately on top of the shower waste, they're in effect reducing the flow into the waste itself. So therefore in most cases, I would say that an offset drain is recommended for those reasons and you're sort of really maximizing the space so therefore the water can fall into that corner and you're not blocking it with with how you're behaving sort of in in your sort of shower there are tiles that are um, anti-slip so they have a sort of a rougher texture to them they're still perfectly um comfortable underfoot but they just mean that they take that hazard away from going in and out of your shower zone and when obviously it's it's wet same thing goes for the designated shower trays they tend to have a, a sort of different texture on them you can add anti-slip on top of that if you were particularly worried or if someone wasn't quite as steady on their feet for example you could introduce that as an extra safety measure um, should you want to but it's definitely a good idea to have sort of a slightly texture to the tile or the tray that you're using. And from a, a design aesthetic perspective have you got any ideas of how you could bring something a bit more interesting or fun to a wet room using tiles or brassware or any other design features? Lighting is quite a um, big key because uh, lighting can change the the mood of a room quite a lot so and that's definitely one Creating nice, perhaps linear alcoves uh, is a nice thing. Also, it's practical because you do need somewhere to put your shampoo and so, uh, so forth without having to perhaps bend down to get them on the shower tray. For example, if you are creating an alcove, you could choose to have a, a different tile at the back of that. You can have lighting within that alcove. Um, you can have some color to your shower tray or to your screen. So there's quite a few elements that you can do to to jazz it up a bit if you wanted to looking at the aspects that we talked about before so taking all this element into account and making sure it looks that little bit more special um for you because it is a room that you use on a daily basis so why not make it as nice as you possibly can i think that's an excellent place to end make it as nice as you possibly can and make it an experience for you to recharge and unwind after a busy day yeah so all that's left to say really is thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Helen, for some excellent tips on creating a wet room and a wet room style bathroom. And I'll see you again at the next bathroom sessions. Thank so, you for having me. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.